Parents across Australia are speaking up, complaining that the threat of suicide is being used manipulatively to pressure them into agreeing to gender transition for their children. Parents who adopt a more cautious approach to gender transition are being characterised as hostile to the child's best interests. Advocates reason that if gender affirmation reduces the risk of suicide, then parents who object represent a danger to their child. A great deal depends on whether this claim that affirmation reduces suicidality turns out to be true or not. New South Wales mother Judith Hunter is among those who speak out against the suicide claim being used as emotional blackmail against parents. Following her daughter's surprise announcement of a transgender identity, medical staff at the John Hunter Hospital assured Judith and her husband of the need for immediate medical gender transition. They were asked, would you rather have a dead daughter or a live son? An Information for Parents flyer produced by Queensland Children's Hospital Gender Service includes a quote from the father of a 10-year-old trans boy who says, The real concern was the statistic on suicide. I didn't want my son to be one, so I supported him in the decisions ahead and informed him as best as possible. And the back of the flyer assures readers that studies show that strong parental support of their gender diverse child leads to a 93% reduction in suicide attempts, comparative to parents who are unsupportive or only somewhat supportive. Notice the plural word studies. There are actually no studies referenced to support this statistic. All that is referenced is a lobby group survey called TransPulse that was never published in a medical journal and was never peer reviewed. Queensland general practitioner David Van Gend says about this survey, it was a small, unrepresentative sample of 84 anonymous youth from Canada a decade ago. No control group, no in-person interviews, no follow-up to clarify the claims of attempted suicide. And in Melbourne, the Royal Children's Hospital Foundation website claims that Australian data shows 80% of transgender young people self-harm and 48% attempt suicide before the age of 24. This is happening internationally too. A 2023 letter by the president of the US Endocrine Society published in the Wall Street Journal argued that medical gender affirmation is life-saving because it reduces the risk of suicide. But an answering letter signed by 20 clinicians from different countries pointed out that every systematic review of evidence to date, including one published in the Journal of the Endocrine Society, has found that the evidence for mental health benefits of hormonal interventions for minors to be of low or very low certainty. Walt Heyer, a detransitioner who now counsels others who suffer from sex change regret in the US, has an explanation for the high rates of transgender suicide that directly confronts the central presupposition of affirmative care. According to Heyer, transgender suicide because they have untreated mental health problems. The anecdotal evidence for this is credible. It's supported by a growing body of academic articles critiquing different aspects of the claim that affirmation reduces suicide. Most recently, a 2024 peer-reviewed study from Finland published in the British Medical Journal supports the view that problems afflicting trans youth may have more to do with the psychiatric problems that often accompany gender distress rather than by the gender dysphoria itself. The authors described their findings as follows. Experiencing gender dysphoria significant enough to seek medical gender reassignment appears to not be associated with increased suicide mortality, but suicides appear to be explained by psychiatric morbidities. The study concludes, it is of utmost importance to identify and appropriately treat mental disorder in adolescents experiencing gender dysphoria to prevent suicide. This study is of particular importance in the Australian context because of a quirk of Australian law. A 1992 High Court ruling, Marion's case, prohibited parents intentionally sterilising their daughter. Key family court rulings that have allowed medical gender transition to proceed have relied on the belief that medical gender affirmation qualifies as an exception to the prohibition established by Marion's case that it represents a special medical treatment because it is necessary to save life. In the absence of this justification, 
there would be serious consequences for clinicians who effectively sterilize children. Advocates for gender affirmation who regard gender diversity as part of the natural spectrum of human experience strongly resist the suggestion that trans or gender diverse identities might be associated with a mental health diagnosis. But could it be that the activist ambition to normalize trans identities has created a no-go zone that prevents clinicians recognizing and exploring the possibility that mental health issues might, even in some circumstances, be contributing to an individual's discomfort with their biological sex characteristics? Could it be that by treating gender dysphoria as necessarily unrelated to other mental health issues, Clinicians have been guiding children toward massive bodily interventions that may, in the end, both fail to resolve the real problem whilst adding new ones. An increasing number of detransitioners are reporting deep unhappiness about not being able to have children, or not being able to breastfeed their babies, or having permanently altered voices and bodies, and stunted growth, bone density issues, unknown alterations to their brains, and loss of sexual function. Some of them are now suing the professionals who pointed them down the road to sex change with promises that haven't come true. What is happening is an unregulated medical experiment, a medical scandal of historic proportions. Instead of looking into these important questions, parliaments around Australia have been avoiding the question and we say it's time for an inquiry.